Hello, I'm Justin Heyer with LongRangeOnly.com. Today I'm out looking for rock chucks with the Zeiss Conquest 85mm spotter. I've used it for that purpose for quite a few months now, as well as some target shooting and other things. We're going to go ahead and give a full video review and let you know what we think about it. Stick around. Here's the box that the Zeiss Conquest will arrive in. It has almost a magnetic type latch down here in this cardboard. Open it up, you're greeted with a nice picture. And now once you're inside, you can see you have a super high quality case. This thing will not get damaged during shipping. Here you can see the contents of the box. You have the spotter itself. It comes with covers already installed on both the ocular and the objective eyepiece. You have two additional covers here for if you remove the eyepiece, these will go ahead and cover that. Then you have some cleaning stuff as well as an instruction manual. It certainly exudes quality when you open up the box. It's nice to uh, see packaging like this. When you go ahead and take this out of the box for the first time, it just exudes quality. It has a very nice rubber armoring. It has the included eyepiece and objective covers like I talked about. The focus ring feels very smooth with about the perfect amount of tension. Just has some real high quality initial impressions right when you open it up. This Zeiss is pretty much standard spotter in terms of operation. You have a helical central focus. It's fast. You can go from infinity to close focus super, super quick. The first few times I used it, I would overshoot or undershoot a little. Once I got used to it, it was pretty easy. You do have the ability to twist it similar to other angled eyepieces. There's a little screw on this back side. It does come with caps like we talked about earlier. The eyepiece cap stays tethered. This has some little pinches on it. Goes ahead and pushes right in the front of the scope and locks it in place. I have a lot of time behind this Zeiss spotter in the last few months trying to get a really thorough field review in. It's been excellent on my rock chuck hunts as well as looking at various birds around the house, stargazing at night, pretty much anything you'd ask a spotter to do, it's been able to do quite well. I was using a Nova grade camera adapter, and in order for that to work, I had to wrap some electrical tape around this eyepiece. There's essentially two slightly different diameters here. I've had this problem with other spotters before. I simply wrap a little electrical tape around it to build it up to the same diameter so my phone adapter can grip just fine. Once I did that, it's been very easy to get quality photos. Here we'll go ahead and show you a video of a rock chuck that my friend Tyson killed at 1,550 yards on his first shot. And we'll also go ahead and show you a few pictures of the moon. 1,550, 7mm with a 195. Now what good would a spotting scope review be without a comparison to other spotters on kind of both sides of this price point? This Zeiss retails for about $2,000 online. Pretty much anywhere you go, that's the price you're going to find. So I decided to compare it to a Vortex Razor 85mm as well as a Miopta S2. The Miopta retails for around $2,400 and the Vortex is around $1,600. So you pretty much split the price difference. Let's go ahead and compare all three in the different areas that I looked at and let you know what I thought. Brightness is the first category we compared them with. Here is what would be expected by the price. The Miopta bested both the Zeiss and the Vortex. It wasn't even close. The Miopta was definitely better. It was immediately apparent. The Zeiss and the Vortex took a little bit longer to distinguish. As the night drew on, the Zeiss started to pull away from the Vortex in terms of brightness. It wasn't until those last few minutes that it really started to do that. It wasn't mind-blowingly better, but it was definitely better. You could see a difference as you swap between the two. So as price points would indicate, Miopta was brightest, Zeiss was second, with a Vortex in a very close third. Resolution was another thing I looked at. Using a little eye chart, I was able to compare the Miopta and the Zeiss head-to-head, -head, and the Miopta edged it out slightly, as would be expected by its price point. I spent a lot of time behind this and a Vortex side-by-side -side in the field, and that Razor and this Zeiss were pretty much neck and neck. There were times I felt one was better and times that others were better. As the night drew on when we were doing the brightness test, I do feel I could read stuff better on some signs I was looking at with this Zeiss. And that was no doubt just due to the little bit brighter image that it was producing. 
focusing of all three utilize the same central helical focus mechanism. And here I think the razor was actually one of the easier to get focused. It had a large, it was a slower focus, which allowed for a, you know, a larger sweet spot as you were trying to dial it in. The Zeiss was the fastest and it was quick. If you weren't paying attention, you'd go right over or under what you were looking to focus on. But once you had a little time behind it, it was nice, especially if you were, for someone who's like a birder who may be looking very close to very far away, super quick to make that change. And the Miata was somewhere in the middle between the two. All three were able to achieve nice focus, especially in field conditions that was just pleasing to the eye. Field of view of this spotter, it is a little bit higher powered spotter. A lot of guys are used to running a 20 to 60. This is a 30 to 60 wide angle. So as the Miata and the Razor starts down at 27 power, and the Razor and the Zeiss are very similar in field of view. It's very, very close, especially in the field. I don't think you'd ever notice a difference. The Miata does have a little bit bigger angle on the bottom end, but when you zoom them all into 60, almost all of them look exactly the same. And it really is nice having that little extra magnification while still maintaining a large field of view on the low end. Eye positioning on this Zeiss is a little more picky than what I'm used to. It was a little more picky than the Vortex as well. When doing side-by-side -side comparisons, it was just a little bit easier to get comfortable. However, this is not hard to get comfortable. It's just not as easy. Once you get behind this, it becomes second nature. I was able to use it for hours on end without a single issue. Literally, there were times I would glass for two to three hours almost nonstop while looking for rock chucks. Never had anything close to a headache. It's definitely a fine instrument that you can spend a lot of time behind. As you can see from the review, the Zeiss is loaded with features and performs optically right where you should expect it to given its price point. If you're in the market for a new spotter and want that 85 millimeter advantage that you can get, the Zeiss is definitely one you should consider around that $2,000 price range. Thanks for watching the review. Go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow us on social media on Instagram and Facebook and go join our forum to ask any questions regarding this scope or any other long range questions you may have. Thanks.